Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here. This is awesome. What a great group of people to be on stage with. I'm very proud to be here with our legislators and the lieutenant governor. This is fabulous because it's about getting results in Michigan. So I am very pleased to be here. I'm, it's always great to have my partner in this, Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly. Which side? There you are. It's great to have the lieutenant governor with us. And then, as you can see, we've got large representations from both houses. Um, we have the Senate Majority Leader, Randy Richardville, and Chairman Kahn with us, and a number of the colleagues from the Senate. So thank you for joining us today. And then from the House, we have Speaker Jay Spolger and Chairman Moss with us, and a large contingent. It's very happy to see all of you today. This is fabulous. Um, it's an opportunity to talk about progress in the state of Michigan, and that's where I'm very pleased to be here today. To put it in perspective, today's a major milestone in the reinvention of Michigan. Um, in terms of looking at it, though, I want to step back to the starting point where we began with, that in many cases I think we've overlooked. The starting point we had coming into this year is we were looking at a significant deficit. We were looking at about a billion and a half dollar deficit in a situation where we hadn't had a structurally balanced budget for a number of years. It had relied on one-time funds to get us year to year, and we had a lot of open issues of finally having those problems come to roost in this year to say there's a significant deficit that needed to be addressed. The second piece is, is this was a difficult budget to do. And I know that's something that if I took a poll of these people, they would all agree. Um, we are in difficult economic times, and we had to make difficult choices to make this budget work. That was not easy, and we know we're asking for sacrifice from people. And there are people out there suffering in our state, and we don't underestimate that. That's why it was very important in this budget that we worked hard to sustain certain things, in particular Medicaid reimbursement rates for some of our most at-need people, for early childhood, for the kids out there in terms of making sure we can create a better environment. So even in these difficult budget times, there were priorities that we said we needed to keep going on and we needed to sustain for the future. Looking at it, though, I'm very proud to be on the stage today because I believe we've set a new standard in budgeting not just in Michigan, but I think we're potentially a good role model for the rest of the country in several respects. First of all, in terms of speed. If you look at it, many of our municipalities, many of the jurisdictions in the state are on a June 30 fiscal year end. And if you look at the past, by not having a budget done until after that date, we left them hanging as to where their situations were and how they could plan accordingly. That was not a good situation. So in particular, for the speed to get this budget done, to get it done before the end of June is a huge accomplishment in terms of hopefully helping our partners, the local jurisdictions and the schools, in terms of doing budgeting better and more effectively at their level. And I need to give a special shout out to, again, the leadership and particularly the chairs and all the people on those committees for stepping up because it was a very aggressive timetable. Um, we had some fun with it in terms of clocks and everything else, but as a practical matter, um, it was good hard work, and I really appreciate the response from everyone here. More importantly, though, than speed is the quality of this budget. And that's something we should be proud of, too, in several respects. We actually did a planning process to so show a second-year budget. And why people didn't spend a lot of time on it, it was fundamental in terms of the decision-making processes we went through. And we're going to continue on that path to say, let's look farther out. We need to get away from the mentality of short-term results and not understanding long-term implications. It is important in the future we continue to be more and more strategic to say, these are the right answers for the ongoing sustainable best interest of our citizens, instead of looking at simply of what do we need to get by each and every year. And we set that tone and that tenor this year on a positive path towards the future. So I believe that was critically important. Another thing, though, that I think really stands out is that this was a budget that wasn't just about cash in and cash out. Again, that short-term mentality of the past was, is here's dollars on our income statement, here's dollars we have, let's spend those dollars. We, were not been making, we have not been making payments on our long-term liabilities in a fiscally responsible way. We are doing that with this budget. We are starting on the path to true fiscal responsibility to take care of our citizens most appropriately. So in terms of making payments on post-retiree obligations, we've got a major payment there. 
And then to the degree we found one-time funds available, we set aside money in the rainy day fund for future retirement obligations and many good aspects that show we are planning for the future and we are looking at the long-term liability side of things in addition to just the short-term cash in, cash out. I'm also pleased to say we have an improving economy and that did help some of the tough cuts we had to make in terms of mitigating the impact of those. But I believe we did it in a very thoughtful fashion by saying these are one-time funds and that people can plan accordingly for next year to understand they are one-time funds and we need to compensate for that going forward in the future. Overall though, I would summarize it by coming back to where I started. This is a major milestone in the reinvention of Michigan. And the reinvention of Michigan has two driving forces to it. One is, is the need for more and better jobs. The second piece is about keeping our kids in this state. Now, many times people look at a budget and say, how does that relate to jobs? This is a jobs budget. This is a budget that's standing up to say the impact, the financial responsibility of the state by us being fiscally responsible, by creating an environment that's going to be stable, thoughtful, predictable, and transparent on the budgeting side, helps create that environment for business and free enterprise to work. To say, here is an environment you want to participate in. Here is an environment you can be confident that if you create a job, you know the rules of the road and how things are going to operate. And I would just contrast Illinois as an illustration that showed what can happen when you don't have that kind of stability. So I think it's an outstanding illustration that this is a jobs budget. The second piece is this is a kid's budget. Because if you looked at it, we had a system in the past where we were racking up increasing liabilities. We were not making payments on those the way we should have been. We are now making those payments in a responsible fashion. We are a path to continue that. And that's that situation where we're not going to leave a state in worse shape than when we are running it for our kids in the future. It is our responsibility, and I feel it's important that we work as hard as possible to clean things up so our kids have the greatest state to have in terms of not having the issues we're having to address today. And that's exciting. So in many respects, how do you describe a budget? It's not an exciting thing. It's not think th something that evokes passion traditionally from people. But to me, if you step back and look at the hard work that this team has done together as a great team, it is about jobs. It is about our young people. And it is exciting because it is focusing on the reinvention of our state. So I appreciate you joining us today. And with that, let me turn it over to Speaker Bolger. Thank you. Very well said. This budget faced many difficult decisions because we understand the people behind those decisions. But I think our voters spoke clearly to us when they sent us to Lansing. And they said they wanted us to make sure we balanced the budget by living within our means. That's what we did here. And they also said clearly, quit passing on debt to our kids and grandkids. We want our kids and grandkids to live here in Michigan not be saddled with the debt that we leave behind. And that's a marked difference. So while a lot of attention gets paid, and I think rightfully so, on the deadline, on getting this budget done early, making sure that our schools and our local municipalities can balance their budget with real information from the state, is the content of this budget. And the facing reality, while those difficult decisions were certainly difficult to make, they were important to make because it was about reality. It was about facing that reality here in Michigan so we could hit that reset button and move forward. The state will be in a much healthier place, ready to forge ahead, ready to be a state that can attract jobs, grow our economy, keep our kids and grandkids here, and be very stable and fertile going forward. I want to make sure that I thank the many people that worked very hard on this, certainly our Senate colleagues, a great working relationship, the governor's office, but then our House Chair Moss, Subcommittee chairs all worked very hard, and certainly our staff, uh, Chris, Patty, Mitch, Mary Ann, worked long hours, pushed to make sure that we had the information we needed to make the decisions to get this budget done. So while certainly when you've got a budget that cut about one and a half billion dollars worth of spending, when you've got a budget that put money away into savings account and to paying down future debt, we understand all of those dollars were dollars some people wanted to spend. 
it's easy to focus on what other people wanted to spend that money on. But I hope the message today is about how stable Michigan will be going forward, how our budget is balanced structurally, finally, and how we're paying down that debt, making sure that we're prepared for a prosperous future. So it's my pleasure to introduce a strong co-worker and colleague, Senator Richard Bell. I'm not as strong as I used to be. You know, people ask me what the best part of this job is, and I tell them it's the people. And when I say that, I, I'm talking about the people you get to meet around the state, back home, people you may or may not have known about, people in communities from the Upper Peninsula all the way down to the uh, southern, southern tip where I live. And um, if you'd asked me a year ago if I would have been happy to work so closely with a nerd for the last six months, I probably would have told you I didn't, uh, I didn't anticipate that. <laughs> But he's one of the people that uh, has, is really, you know, you th just think about it for a second. You've got a governor here that decided he doesn't have to do this. He's been working pretty hard. He's, you know, got a pretty fine uh, lifestyle as it is down there in Ann Arbor. And he takes a look at the state and he says, I want to get involved and I want to try and make this a better place. And then we've got a guy named Brian Kelly who's only 34 or something like that. And you probably don't know this, but he is the guy that provides the chemistry that makes this leadership team work. He's probably the most active um, lieutenant governor we've had in recent years. He's an incredible guy that brings great talent. Speaker Bolger and his team, I mean, if you look at what the state was going through just a year ago, and we've got 50, 60 brand new people from these communities I talked about around the state saying, hey, send me up there to that mess. I want to try and be a part of fixing it. You know, you would never have anticipated that they would set records and make tough decisions the way that they have. We've got 30 new members of the Senate. And I would never have anticipated that Roger Kahn would be able to lead that team of appropriations people, most of whom, if you think about this, never had a gavel in their hand up here. And I've known Roger for a little, a little <laughs> under 50 years now. <laughs> we go back a long ways. But he's provided incredible leadership, as did Chuck Moss. None of these decisions were easy. And we also had to balance that, of course, with a restructured, uh, restructured tax plan which was just as challenging as this budget. I believe we have set a foundation. And when we talked early in this, uh, in this uh, year, we said that we thought that the first six months were going to be the most critical to the four years that we are, are going to be up here. And we wanted to set a tone of running this place like a business. I, I was here for 12 years or something like that before this year. I never heard the term balance sheet before. We weren't concerned about Wall Street. We didn't balance revenues. We just had good ideas, but revenues with expenses. Now we've got a fiscally responsible state being run for the first time by, like I said, some incredible people. And I'm, part, I'm proud to be a part of this team of folks. Thank you very much. I'm going to sign the bill, but before I do that, I do want to give special recognition to all the teams of people, the staffs that worked on this project, from the House, the Senate, the fiscal agencies, and the Department of Management and Budget, and all our cabinet departments. In fact, I want to give one special shout out to John Nixon, our import from Utah, um, who has done a fabulous job. And unfortunately, he couldn't join us today. He actually had a speaking commitment with the Pew Foundation. Um, so he's here in spirit. So actually, I encouraged the staff to send him a photo saying, wish you could be with us and get a colorful reaction out of John today. <laughs> um, but it's been a great team effort. So I want to say thank you to all the people that worked on this project. And with that, um, let's sign. Thank you.
So, in terms of keeping with the, the, the policy that I know the media enjoys so much, um, if we could stick to the budget first, and then we'll be happy to open it up. You mentioned a lot of positives that uh, you had in this budget. What were some of the problems you saw that, that you articulated in the veto letters? Well, the veto letters were fairly minor items in terms of going through things. And, again, I, I wouldn't highlight those. I just think they were part of the normal process of doing this. I'm new to this, but there are a few things that – we thought appropriate to, um, again, more minor line items to deal with in that context. And the other thing is, is there was a certain amount of language that we just made it clear that I really appreciate the language being put in the bills because it shows the intent of the legislature, things they believe in, but as a practical matter, um, they're not legally enforceable items. But again, I appreciate the feedback and input. Hey, Governor, you say it's a kid's budget. I can, I can almost hear the screams of the school districts and the teachers' unions who all say you've been cutting funding to kids. How can you call it a kid's budget? It is a kid's budget because it's about creating a Michigan for their future. If you look at it, the numbers we showed in the Citizens Guide to Financial Statements showed we had $47 billion of liabilities at the state of Michigan level. Then you start looking at local jurisdictions. Those are huge numbers that's even larger by several degrees of magnitude. Those are huge numbers to say, we're going to pass that on to our kids? That's not a good answer. And it's about being fiscally sound. And with respect to education, um, we started with a smaller cut than the percentage we needed to do for the whole budget to begin with. We got it down to less than a, a couple points, which is still, again, we were asking for sacrifice. But if you look at our special message on education, I believe we're doing a lot of wonderful things on the educational front to say it's not about money or spending money. It's about getting our kids to grow and to show real results for our children in a broken system. It has fabulous people, but we have a broken educational system. I wouldn't say that because I believe there's great input and feedback. If we went and talked to the, the various members here, they'll tell you they served on a lot of committees and subcommittees where there was very vigorous discussion involving both parties in terms of the issues and topics. That was listened to. It gets reflected in the budget process. So this was just not a one-party thing. This was people going through the traditional democratic process in a very thoughtful and effective way. And that's why I want to thank both houses so much and the leadership of both the committees and the subcommittees, because they understand the process, they listen well, and it's about teamwork in the long term. Kevin, are we done with deficits? I certainly hope so, Tim. Again, that's the focus. You, I don't do promises in terms of guarantees, but as a practical matter, the nice part about doing the 2013 planning budget, it showed we have reached the bottom in terms of the conditions we had in terms of economic forecast and budget process and shows we can now move forward in a positive way um, that we've, we're getting this behind us in terms of shared sacrifice because it's about us winning together and about being positive, forward-looking, and inclusive. A phrase I know you like so much. It's about relentless positive action. <laughs> and you look good today. I like the dress code today, Tim. <laughs> Governor, with all due respect, the, the second year budget, you still are going to have to pass another budget next year, right? Absolutely, but I think, again, it's the, the mindset. And I can tell you, when we were doing it from the administration point of view, going through this process, by just doing a second year out there, it impacted our thought process to say, is this sustainable? Is this going in the right direction? Are these thoughtful things? And I appreciate it. There's already been some good legislation passed that I signed recently that talked about looking three and five years out in terms of better forecasting from the economic point of view and the work we should be doing. This is, is it's the right direction. Let's be strategic instead of just tactical. Governor, when you say that we're moving forward a little bit from shared sacrifice, so should school districts not expect further cuts in next year's budget? Well, again, there are one-time funds being used, but as a practical matter, um, we hope we're at the bottom point in working through these issues. One thing I would emphasize, though, is we're going to continue the dialogue on best practice because I believe that's an appropriate exercise to say we all need to step it up. And when we talk about best practice, for any jurisdiction we've talked about involving in that, we said we'd give them credit for the good things they've done 
and we're not asking them to do things we're not looking at or we haven't done ourselves. So it's a team effort. It's not about putting a burden on them. It's about partnering together to make us a more efficient state because it's all about our citizens and about giving them real value for money. So Michigan's economy is now growing? Well, I think you can see that in terms of the latest forecast, which is a positive. We don't take that for granted, though, because there are still some very major variables out there in the macroeconomic world. But it's a good thing is I have a sense that Michigan's head in a very positive direction, and we want to see that continue to flourish. And the things we are doing with tax reform, this budget, it is really creating that level playing field, that environment for success and job creation. So if anything, the work we're doing today hopefully will accelerate that progress. Governor, do you believe that the state is in a position to tell universities whether they should be offering uh, same-sex benefits or live-in benefits? Well, again, I'm not going to speculate it. That's a hypothetical kind of situation oh, that is a practical matter. What's that? Yeah, that was in boilerplate again, though. So it's not an enforceable provision. So that issue is really not on the table. And again, um, there's issues that we need to address in terms of university funding. I want to look at ways we can get more into education overall in the long term. So we're going to continue to have a good discussion next year on all education, hopefully higher ed, and finding better funding mechanisms for them. Um, essentially, th that is boilerplate. So we're saying, again, I respect the opinion of the legislature, but that's not enforceable, and we're not going to ask for the reports, just as we wouldn't on a number of other provisions. So I wouldn't highlight just that. Again, there's a number of provisions where they are expressing intent. I clearly respect that. That's part of the process. But as a practical matter, um, we're going to follow through on following what the appropriations are and making sure we're doing our job well um, based on the mandate of the legislature. Um, I haven't spent, I've spent very little time on redistricting because as a practical matter, I have confidence in the legislature and coming up with a sound legal constitutional basis for redistricting that's very thoughtful. And when it arrives on my desk, I look forward to the opportunity to sign it. Um, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'll take a look at when it arrives, and I know they're working hard on getting a great product. Last question? Will your office be doing a separate legal analysis? Um, again, it hasn't arrived yet, Peter, so as a practical matter, usually we get very good information from the work that's already being done from both houses. Governor, will you get the bridge vote when you want it? Well, you know me, I'm always an impatient person, but as a practical matter, the, we're going to continue to work the bridge. I appreciate the legislature working hard, so hard on so many issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at what we've accomplished in this first six-month period, it's incredible. Um, the bridge, it just needs more homework and effort, and I'm looking forward to it. And that's the nice part about relentless positive action. One of those words is relentless, so we'll stay after it. <laughs> Thank you. Governor, in another Thank area, you. you promised another question. Yes? We had two. When I said last, I said, you guys did two. 